So this segment, let's go ahead and build more on what we know about Le Chatelier's principle. So first of all, let's just kind of recap what it is. And it's basically stating what happens to an equilibrium system in the event of stress in the form of some change in um, concentration of um, reactants or products, change in volume, which is also um, affects the pressure, or a change in temperature. So let's start with concentration, as it's kind of the easiest one. Okay, so basically the effect of a change in concentration. So remember when I'm saying concentration, I mean uh, the units of reactants or products in moles per liter. So let's take this um, scenario here um, where everything, we have a homogeneous equilibrium, right? So all of the reactants and products are in the gaseous phase, okay? So let's say the equilib equilibrium condition is defined by the concentrations of our reactants A and B and our product C. So what would happen here if we increase the concentration of A by 1.0 molar? So basically, the system is going to want to compensate for that. So there's going to be an increase in the molecular collisions happening here as a result of an increased concentration of the reactant. So A and B are going to be um, having more collisions, and as a result of that, creating more of the product C. So our forward reaction for a while is going to increase. As a result of that, making so there's going to be more C, so then eventually the back reaction will also increase its rate and make more of A and B until the system kind of mellows out and is back at equilibrium. But at that point, you're still going to have more of your product C left. So basically we say then that the equilibrium has shifted to the right, and that's where the, equilib the new equilibrium position lies. That does not have effect, though, on our equilibrium constant K. So K does not change. That's important to note here. So let's talk about the effect of a change in volume. So first, let's recall from understanding gas laws um, that if you have a decrease in volume, that's going to increase your pressure, right? So you change the spatial di dimensions. It gets smaller. You have the same number of molecules present, so the pressure will increase. So um, conversely, if the volume goes up, then the pressure will decrease. So remember that volume and pressure are inversely related. So based on Le Chatelier's principle, again, it will state for us that whatever stressor is added to the system, that the system's going to shift in the direction that's going to reduce that stress. So in this case, it's going to reduce the pressure um, added to the system. So then when the volume of, of the gaseous reaction at equilibrium is decreased, then the system will shift in the direction giving less gas molecules. So um, here, again, simple equation, um, homogeneous equilibrium, everything is in the gaseous phase. So we've got our reactants A and B and our products, our product D. Okay, so here on the left, if we look at our stoichiometric coefficients here, we've got one and one, so two total moles of reactant here. And on the product side, though, we have three. So if we were to decrease our volume, basically increasing our pressure, then our equilibrium is going to shift to the left, right? Because on the left-hand side, we have two moles. On the right-hand side, we have three moles. Um, conversely, if we increase the volume, make more space in our reaction vessel, then the pressure will go down. And so the tendency of the system is to want to make more moles of product. Okay, so then it'll shift to the right because we've got three moles of product here versus our two moles of reactant. So the last stressor that we want to talk about is the effect of a change in temperature. So the most important thing to note here is that the value of K, the equilibrium constant, does in fact change with temperature. In a problem, usually when you're um, given a set of conditions to solve an equilibrium problem, when they define K for you, they will tell you at what temperature that K actually holds true. Um, so this is a point where people always get tripped up. K changes um, with temperature, but that's the only, this is the only stressor for which K is changed. Okay, so again, Le Chatelier's principle will predict the direction of change. So whether the equilibrium is shifted forward or whether it's shifted backward. So how do you know that though? So for a change in temperature, you need to discuss whether or not the reaction is an exothermic reaction or an endothermic reaction. 
So let's just remember what those mean for a second. So with an exothermic reaction, exo outside, that means that the reaction produces heat, right? So it goes forward, and as a result of going forward, it produces heat. If it's an endothermic reaction, it means that heat is actually required in order to carry out the reaction. Okay, so energy is consumed in order to make the reaction go forward. Okay, so here again, based on this equilibrium, if we have an exothermic reaction where energy is released, then we treat heat as a product. Okay, so in this generic equation here, again, everything, it's a homogeneous equilibrium. We've got our reactants A and B in the gaseous phase and our product D, and we also have the product heat. So Le Chatelier will tell us that if we add heat into the system as a product, in order to compensate for that addition, it's going to want to shift the equilibrium back to the left, right? So then the equilibrium shifts to the left to compensate for the fact that we basically added products to our system in the form of heat. The other side of that is if it's endothermic, where you're consuming energy. So in order for this reaction A plus B to form 3D, heat is actually required. So putting heat into the system, making heat a reactant, means that now the system is going to compensate for the fact that you added another reactant on the left-hand side. So it's going to want to shift forward or to the right in order to compensate for this addition of heat. Again here, this is a homogeneous equilibrium, and so all these same rules apply. The most important thing, though, again, is to remember that K does change with temperature and only with temperature, and that is Le Chatelier's principle.